Anissa Coy here with Firehouse Education and this week's Ask Anissa video column. And today our question is coming in via email from Amber with First Call Rest, uh, Disaster Services. So thank you, Amber, for the email. It is an awesome email, so I'm going to read it to you. It's pretty, pretty involved. Hi, Anissa. First, I would like to thank you for all of the great education you provide. I have enjoyed watching your videos for the past few years. You're welcome, Amber. Glad you like them. I have been in this business for about seven years now and feel pretty confident when making decisions on what to clean and the best way to do so. However, an area I continuously go back and forth on is cleaning products, chemicals, and liquids. Hygiene, perfumes, etc. Do you have a standard rule when it comes to cleaning these types of items or do you make a judgment call each time based on the level of soot? present and whether the homeowner wants to write them off or have them cleaned. When does it not make sense to clean certain items? And should I have a rule in place that is a standard to avoid confusion on this? The thing I love the most about this business is there is always more to learn and I am constantly presented with new challenges in addition to the very rewarding work that we do. I appreciate your feedback and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you, kind regards, Amber. Wow, Amber, you know, I feel the same way that you do. Um, I love this industry so much because of the constant change, right, that goes on. And every job is really so uniquely different that we can truly say no two jobs are the same. Now, that being said, you have some really great questions about, you know, kind of coming up with some parameters. And I want to I wanna talk um, to you about that. So. For instance, first off, there's several things here that I want to address. The first thing is I want to talk about chemicals, liquids, the hygienes, perfumes, that sort of thing. Um, when it comes to hygiene items and cleaning, I don't really care what the level of soot is. Here's what I do with my, my standard that I, I put as a rule in my company, whether I'm you know on the job or one of my employees is doing it. If it is something that touches your skin and it is exposed, I don't care how light the fire is, if there is soot present in a room and there's a open bottle of shampoo in the bathroom or there's cotton you know, Q-tips in the cabinet drawer or on the counter, toothpaste, toothbrushes sitting on the counter, they all go. Um, I don't even, offer to clean them because I don't want the liability, okay? The other thing is, and I wanna just bring this up because you didn't mention it, but I wanna, I wanna talk about it, that's medications, things that are inside of a medicine cabinet. Again, I go with the hygiene rule. If it touches your skin, if it goes on you or you ingest it, then I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna offer to clean it. I'm not even gonna make it a possibility. If the homeowner wants it cleaned, they can handle that themselves or talk to their adjuster about having someone else do it. I'm just not gonna do it because I don't want the liability. And when it comes to things like that you ingest, medicines wise, we do not handle any prescription medications. If there's any medications in the home that are prescribed, we put them in a Ziploc bag, return them to the homeowner and recommend that they take them into their medical professional or pharmacist and find out if they're even okay. I just don't want that kind of liability and I would never want to handle things like narcotics or pain meds, things like that, because there's a lot of liability in that. Okay. The other thing is, is I want to talk about, so, so that's kind of the hygiene thing, right? I don't care the level of soot. If it is exposed, it's gone. I don't clean it at all. If it's a, let's say you've got a four pack of shaving cream that's still shrink wrapped from Costco in a pantry in the bathroom and it's light soot. I will remove them out of that plastic. And if there's no soot on the inside of the plastic, then I'm going to go ahead and just repack those items and that will be fine. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the liquids and chemicals, and then we're going to talk about cost. Uh, you know, is it economically smart to clean these items? So when it comes to cleaning liquids and chemicals, that is strictly based upon the level of soot for me. If it is a light fire and it's a quick wipe down of these items, then I will go ahead and wipe them down and do that, make that call. If an item is, you know, just got a little bit in the bottom of the container, 
then I will ask the homeowner, is it okay if I throw this away? Not logging it destroyed for the insurance company to replace it because it's pretty much empty, should have been in the garbage anyway. I will ask if I can just throw that away. But if it's a medium to heavy soot fire situation where I'm gonna have to spend some time scrubbing on a plastic jug of Windex, that's not worth it, okay? Then I just automatically put all of those items to a, to a destroyed list or non-salvage. The other thing is, is in all of this instance, where we're talking about the chemicals, the liquids, the hygiene stuff, we definitely want to feel out our homeowner and where is their level of tolerance? How do they feel about these things? Um, the same with the adjuster. Some I've had some adjusters come in and just go, oh, you know what? Just all cleaning supplies, buy them all new. Just get rid of them. All bathroom items, just we'll do all new. All hygiene items, just don't even bother. Um, that sort of thing. So you, there's definitely a little bit involved with the homeowner. There's definitely a little bit involved with the adjuster, but as a general rule, that's how I deal with the cleaning uh, liquids and chemicals and then the, the hygiene items. And again, I don't spend a lot of time on these things because we bill time and materials. So if you're, or if you're billing by the box, it really doesn't matter. You don't want to spend a lot of time because obviously these are not highly expensive items. They're not items that have a bunch of sentimental value. So you're going to want to, you know, know that it is a, what we call a quick clean or a quick wipe down. Okay. If it's not understand you, you may need to go ahead and put it on the log destroyed non salvage list because it's not economical to wipe these items down. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about that you brought up was perfumes. Now, Perfumes are, <clears throat> I treat them just like any other hygiene item. I have had some homeowners that are really not concerned about the toothpaste that's in the bathroom, but really freaked out about the perfume that they're going to spray on their skin that's, you know, on their bedroom uh, dresser. So again, I, I, I'm not a chemist. I can't get inside of that perfume bottle. So depending on how hot the fire was, did it actually affect it? I have no idea. Uh, perfume can, if it gets too hot, actually turn bad, if you will. I learned that. So, you know, really good perfume. So there is that to consider. But again, like I said, I'm not a chemist. So if I have someone who's really concerned about their high-end perfumes, then I'll have a conversation usually with them and with the adjuster. And oftentimes they will just get written off. But what you have to really think about, and this is where education of your team and your crew, so you don't always, Amber, have to be out there and be the one making these judgment calls, is teaching them to understand and to recognize what they're working with, okay? So as a general rule, you could make a general rule regarding the personal hygiene items and the liquids and cleaning chemicals like we talked about. And what you wanna do is you wanna make that based upon, first off, the level of contamination which is huge in everything here that we're talking about. The soot level of contamination is huge. So this is the first thing you need to do on a fire job is go in and check every single room so that you know what that contamination is in any given room. And that will help you then to be able to know what procedures and you know what items in this room do you feel definitely need to go on the non-salvage list or that you feel like you can go ahead and clean them and restore them back to pre-loss condition? Okay, Amber, well, I hope that helped answer your question and clear things up. That was a super awesome question and I really appreciate y'all sending them to me. So keep them coming. And on that note, I'm going to let you go have a great rest of your day and I will see you on next week's Ask Anissa video column.